Good afternoon, Gear Stitchers. It's Judy Whitman with JBW Designs. And you're probably asking yourself, hmm, why is she recording a video again when she just did one six days ago? So I'll tell you the reason, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, this, the last one that I did was very short, and it was aimed specifically at uh, shop owners because our expo, our wholesale needlework market, which is a virtual show at, at, during this time, is starts this weekend on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And so I did a video last weekend, and it was only like 14 minutes long. The shop owners, this is, the video is posted in our quote booth at the virtual show. And because the shop owners have so many vendors to visit, you want to make that video as short as possible. But I had so many other things that I wanted to tell you about the new releases that I think I promised in that video that I would record another one. And this time I want to really go into detail about uh, how I got the idea for the design. Sometimes I show you the development of it. I want to talk to you specifically about the finishing of each piece and the products that I used to give you some ideas. Uh, yesterday I actually ran into Hobby Lobby to do a quick little perusal of what they have right now and I found four new products that I think would work well with some of my designs. So I, I took pictures of some of them. They weren't, some of them weren't on sale yet and, and I bought a few of them. So at the end of the video I want to show you those products that might be an inspiration for you. So this is uh, floss tube number 44. Thank you so much for subscribing, for watching, and for making such thoughtful and sweet comments. It's I so appreciate your input. So first of all, I have a funny story to tell you. It's kind of a life update, a quick life update. So I, I told you, I think two videos ago, that our oldest grandson, Wyatt, and his wife, Kylie, um, had committed to doing a mission trip in Uganda for a year and they left um, about 10 days ago and we went up to the airport about an hour from here to see them off and just like I predicted it was very hard but so here's the funny story so uh, Kylie comes up to me as we're greeting one another and she hands me this clock and I think oh my gosh I love this clock wouldn't it be perfect for some of my round designs? And I actually am not sure where, she couldn't remember where she purchased it, so I have to go on a hunt for it. She thought it was either at Myers, which is our kind of our local grocery chain here in Michigan, or at Home Goods. so I will, I will search for it. So study the time on this clock, and you will understand that they didn't give it to us um, to take apart and use for something else. They gave it to us so that we would know always what time it was in Uganda when we were uh, sitting here at home having breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So here it is quarter to two in the afternoon uh, in Michigan and in Uganda right now it's quarter to nine at night. So I thought that was kind of a funny story because I immediately misunderstood the purpose of it, which is kind of cute. So let's see, where to start? I, um, I received a couple of gifts, so I want to show you some of my happy mail that came in. And uh, Lisa sent another gorgeous, gorgeous card that she makes. And uh, look at the inside of that, it's just beautiful. And a really sweet note. And then she has an Etsy shop that I mentioned before, and I will make sure to include uh, products and um, sources for you in the notes below. But she, it turns out, actually makes a couple of beautiful products. Her shop is called Lisa's Craft Room Design, and I, as I say, I'll link it below. So she sent me a couple of gifts, and I just love this. It's a little zippered bag. She knows me well. These are definitely my colors, anything that's pretty in pastel. Thank you, Lisa. That was just so sweet. And then she also sent me a, a towel that I'm going to send to my uh, grandson and granddaughter uh, as a 
Christmas gift and she does the embroidery on these and I just thought they were beautiful so nicely done so that was quite a nice surprise to receive and then I'll tell you what our viewers are very talented well we know that your stitchers you probably do a number of crafts like we all have uh, this was from Sharon and she too made this darling darling card thank you Sharon I just love it and wrote a sweet note about I think she won some prizes and yes she won some prizes uh, from this floss tube so thank you so much that was so sweet of both of you to write um, and then I received another note from a gal named Ellen and she is going to be my advisor on all things French because as you know I love things all things French however I do not speak the language and um, she pointed out to me that on, not only did the French country Santa um, have the wrong first um, little phrase, and I've corrected that on my website, but also there are several accent marks on the words Le Père Noël that I need to correct. So the next time I do anything in French, I have Ellen's email address and I'm going to be reaching out to make sure that I do it correctly. So I appreciate your advice and and help too. That's a, that's a big thing. So I want to kind of walk through each um, design that was released and show you several models and talk to you about the inspiration and the finishing. So I'm going to start with Around France. And uh, th this one, as I sh you may have seen in the previous video, this uh, video will probably take a, a while, so I'm going to encourage you to uh, grab some stitching and uh, something to drink so that uh, you have something to do, of course, while you're watching. So I bought this clock uh, from Hobby Lobby. It's in their wall decor department. It's originally black, and it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I, I wanted to do a clock finish. So it actually turned out to be quite a little devil to take apart. Um, I had to really kind of pound on, because I wanted to take the inside out so I could replace the, um, the face of it with the design. I'm going to show you that up close. And so what I did, let me backtrack with this one if you don't mind for a minute here. I wanted to start first with how do I start the design? Now the idea for this design was actually mentioned to me by a shop owner, Anne, uh, with Dying to Stitch, and she and her partner Pat love the round designs. So we were brainstorming one day on the phone and she said, oh, I think you should do a French one. And then I think you should do owls. So those two actually are appearing in this set of six new releases. So when I start a design like a round design that is just full of a number of different motifs, and it depends on the, the uh, topic, I usually start out, especially in this case, with a long list of ideas of what could go into this design. So I, in this one, the list was very, very long. And some of the, piece, uh, some of the ideas that I have do not lend themselves to being charted in a very small space because if you think about it this is only mm, let's see let's, let's get the book out so we can talk about it about what fabric it was worked on etc so this design is only 72 threads across so that doesn't give you a lot of room but you'll be amazed about how many little motifs i was able to fit into that design so on my list were crowns and hearts that was easy a key the Eiffel Tower, a fleur-de-lis, a harp, a bee scap, a poodle, a rooster, which incidentally is a, a French symbol, the Gaelic rooster, a flag, a uh, fleur, an, a, the French lily, which is almost like a crest that is in there, a wine glass, uh, the Arc de Triomphe, a parasol, a bicycle. Let's see, what else did I put in here? I think that was it. Now I had a couple of things that weren't fitting. I tried to do some oak leaves, which is another French symbol. I also tried to do like an easel and a beret, 
and some of those things they just as I say don't lend themselves to being charted I try them and then I discard them so when I start a design I usually have many uh, what I call iterations so so um, charts of the same design so I'll, I'll start charting on the computer and often I chart something and I'll move it off to the side because I don't like where it's fitting in and I'll print out the first um, copy of the design and then so and I number them and date them kind of so I can keep myself in check here and so then I'll, I'll keep adding to that design and I keep moving elements around and in this case I looked at it at one point and I thought I don't like the balance excuse me for that noise I don't like the balance of it and I ended up taking all of the elements out of the circle and starting over and putting them back in again and then I finally got an arrangement that I thought was very pleasing so let's talk about I just picked up the books two days ago so I can show you the cover of the booklet and I think yes there's a picture in here oh, sorry whoops <laughs> things are flying all over um, of the blue design and then as you can see from the cover I also worked it in red so the blue design let's go back to that so this particular one and I want to tell you about how it was finished uh, was worked on a 36 count linen over two with one ply of floss the over one design was worked on a 28 count uh, antique white yes uh, I had to think a minute cashel linen and that was worked in red and let me look up and tell you the colors that I used here so the blue, which I'm calling a French blue, of course, was Periwinkle from Weeks Dye Works. And the red that I used was Ribbon Red from Classic Color Works. So this is what the new booklet looks like. We decided that the red was more striking for the cover. My graphic artist and I go back and forth. So let's talk about the finishing of this. So I'm going to hold it up close because what I did is I use a protractor and I'm going to go through the steps of again of finishing a round because I got an email this week from somebody that said can you do you have a tutorial I really don't I've talked about it several times but it doesn't hurt to review it with those of you who are new to the channel so first I take a protractor and I measure the inside measurement of this and actually I ended up doing three different um, what I'm going to call mounts First, I used a piece of linen and mounted that as a backdrop be beyond the design. And then I mounted the design itself, and I'll talk to you about that. And then I decided that I needed to put a backing on the back of the clock, so I just did a third piece um, and glued it to the back of the clock. Now, let's see. I'm going to show you the red one, and then we'll talk more about the finishing. I love how this turned out. I had this idea, I like to do several models of the same design, that the it would be fun to make this an ornament because there are a lot of people who either have been to France or love French things or want to go and I thought well wouldn't that make a nice memento for a friend of yours uh, at Christmas time and so I mounted it on a wooden wreath that came a year ago you can see the back of it it actually has um, joy to the world on the back i spray painted this it's it, it's a natural color and then i mounted this um, and I'll, I'll go through the directions on that there is a pom-pom trim around the edges which is made by lady dot creates and the color is sizzle it's a perfect match and then I also felt like because I didn't, I wanted the back, because it's kind of open, to look uh, covered. So I, I covered a second piece, the back of this design, with a little fabric that I had in my stash that actually had little uh, flirt leaves on it. It's hard to see. So let's walk through the steps here. Let me set that aside. So this week, I thought that I had lost one of my models and as I've mentioned before I have so many and so I 
decided I couldn't find the uh, rabbits in the round stitched over one. And I thought, oh, I'll just stitch another model and finish it. And I had this idea that before I actually finish it, finish it, that I would show you the construction of it. So once again, I use a comic board, which I mentioned before. You can buy it uh, on Amazon, you can buy it at a comic book store. The reason I like this is that it is a weight that you can cut with scissors, unlike mat board, which has to be cut with an X-Acto knife. And you can see, so I do two things. I've got my backing fabric and I've got my design itself and I'm doing the very same thing. I'm covering the, the board. I'm just gluing it with fabric glue. As I'm gluing it, I'm kind of pinching the fabric in around the edges so that it's nice and smooth. Before I, I mount this, I use a piece of batting or I like felt. And so you could put a couple of layers of felt under your design or batting to give it a little more depth. And then I'm after these are glued and dried, then I'm just going to put them together like this. And I'm going to hand sew the edges. And then often what I, so I could have done a pom-pom trim, but I'm just gonna put a little, uh, let's see if I can hold this up here so you can see it. A little twisted cording trim on this. And then I'm also going to add, before I add that little twisted cording trim, see if I can hold this up high enough for you to see it. I'm going to add that, it's not centered, but you know what I mean, um, at the top as a little hanger. So I'll sandwich that on the inside and then I will add my cording around the edges. And I have one more little hint for you with the cording. And this I learned from a professional finisher. As you're sewing these two pieces together, if you leave a tiny opening at the very bottom of your design, then you can take the end of the cording, let's grab that, and when you get down to that end, you can kind of poke it in that open area that you have at the base. And then when you come around with the other side of it, you're going to need to wait until you know exactly um, you know, how much you have at the very end of this cording. And then if you take a little piece of scotch tape before you cut this to the desired length and tape it around the end of this so the cording doesn't unravel, then you can poke that other end, if you can picture this, both ends are going through the base of this. And then you can either glue or sew that shut. So I hope that gives you a little help with finishing around um, because I have so many of those designs and some people don't know how to tackle them. So is that all I need to tell you about that one? I think it is. You can always write to me if I've forgotten to tell you something. So the next design that I want to talk to you about, which I know you've seen before, but it's fun to hear about the finishing and also the sources. So this particular design was a sampler, an antique sampler, hope there's no glare here, that um, I purchased at an antique market here in Kalamazoo. It was done by a little girl named Melinda Farrell. I call it Melinda's Marking Sampler. I think it's just charming. I love her colors, uh, and I, I mentioned those before, and I'll mention them again, because she used three shades of aqua and a very dark brown. So I reproduced her colors. They were very true, actually, on the back. That It hadn't faded that much. Uh, she was born in 1801 in Troy, New York. And I got a message uh, the other day on my previous sampler from a gal who said, oh, I need to buy that. Uh, she's, she lives in Troy, New York. So I thought, what a coincidence. So this is my adaptation of that antique sampler. And I have mounted it on a little horn book. And I'm going to give you several sources for this horn book if this is how you decide you want to finish it. It comes unfinished. It is from an Etsy shop called Homestead Needlework. And that Homestead Needlework is all one word. And it's spelled um, needle, obviously, W-O-R-K with an E on the end. 
and April is the owner of this Etsy shop and I sent her a picture of what I'd done and she loved it. She wanted to know what color I used for the paint so I told her it was Delta, oh gosh now I'm trying to think. I think it might have been Blue Ocean, something like that. I'll have to look it up again. And she said, I will paint these, um, this color, if you have customers who are interested in ordering it already painted. So she has quite a few different corn book shapes on her site. In fact, I'll show you. She sent me another one because I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. So here's one that's very similar. I liked kind of the curved edge of this particular one. So this was mounted as a flat, which means uh, I went through the steps just like I did for the round piece that I showed you before. I put a couple layers of batting and then I just used um, a floss, a DMC floss for the corded edge and a little bit for the tie at the top. But I think I thought that turned out so well. So let's look at that book cover and see what it looks like. So this particular book looks like this. You're the first to see the books. Does that make you feel special? I hope so. So let's look at the colors and the fabric. All right, let's do the fabric first. So I stitched this over one on a 28 count antique ivory. And it's a fairly small piece. It's 80 wide by 109 high. And if the over one, I know for a lot of people that is not something you're comfortable with, um, please consider doing it over uh, two on another uh, fabric count that you're comfortable with, whether it's eight or 28. And I actually found a piece of a wooden piece at Hobby Lobby that I think this would fit on in a larger count. So as I mentioned, I'm going to show you all those uh, extra products at the end of this video and the colors I used. And of course, I always put in DMC equivalents. Let me hold this up. So it is a dark brown hickory sticks from Classic Color Works, dark aqua from Kentucky Bluegrass, called, I'm sorry, Kentucky Bluegrass from Weeks Dye Works, a medium aqua, which is vertigray from Weeks, and a pale green, which is called Tiny Vine from Classic Color Works. So there are only four colors in this book, in this design. And the only thing I think I mentioned that I changed about it is in the original, she did all of her stitches over two. Let me hold it up again, except for her name, which was stitched over, whoops, I'm sorry, uh, over one. And when I did the adaptation, because I was working over one for the whole thing, I, of course, had to adapt her name. And so I made, uh, I charted her name on three lines instead of one line as she did it. But if you're doing the over two and you want to do it as the original was done, you certainly could do the main design over two and her name over one. So that is the second one. So let's keep moving here. Oh, I know, I've got to show you a couple more products in my pile. I have many piles around me. So there is another company that makes wonderful wood products. And I've used them many times before. It's called Stitch Etc. And they started out making wooden products and um, selling them at home. Actually, I did a horn book uh, in March. And the horn book that they made for me, the horn book I used was made by this company. And Kim and her daughter Ashley are owners of the company, and they just opened a needle workshop in Farmington, Missouri, which is 75, 75 miles south of St. Louis. So she sent me a couple of uh, samples, and I thought, oh, Kim, this is perfect. So if you can, I, I went to Hobby Lobby trying to find these wreaths again. They don't have all their Christmas stuff out yet. I haven't located them, but their little round horn book would look perfect with this uh, design that I showed you previously, the um, around France design. So I loved that model. And then the next model that I'm going to show you right now is called O'er the Fields We Go. And she sent me a red piece and it would be perfect for the first model that I'm going to share with you today. 
so i would either call or e mail them there on facebook you can always contact them that way so or the fields we go all right let me set this down and move some things around uh, for every design that i do i um i kind of i keep a folder and the folder for the uh, or the fields we go is quite thick because when I looked back at my um, design process for this one, I think I did 21 different versions before I got to the final one that I thought was just right. And I start out with a very rough sketch and just an idea that I jot down. And I wrote down long, narrow, horizontal design with borders, lowercase alphabet, snowflake, hills, and I didn't have a name for it. And thankfully, all of you a couple of videos ago gave me names for suggestions. And I love the name we ended up with. So here is Or the Fields We Go. I've done three models of this one. I did it on, and I'll, I'll tell you the fabrics and the fibers that I used. And what did I want to tell you? I know what I want to tell you. So this design is actually kind of part of a series that's been going on for quite a few years. And I'm trying to think, there are like five designs now in the series, and I'm not sure it doesn't matter to you which is the oldest. I think actually it's Tidings of Joy. So I started out doing both red on white and white on red models. And they all have a similar feel. They have reindeers, they have uh, borders. So Tidings of Joy, these are the uh, preceding designs that led up to this one this year. So Tidings of Joy is one. Oh, Christmas Tree is another. These are all still available, incidentally. The models I'm showing you are stitched over one. You could certainly do it over two. Nordic Reindeer just came out, I think, two years ago. I, have, I must have a thing for reindeer, right? And Joy Noel. They just have a, a charm about them. They look very Scandinavian to me. And then the most recent one was Dashing Through the Snow, which came out last year. And again, I did several models of that. I did it also in red, and I did it in blue. So that kind of, that's, I just like doing these series. They're fun to design. Um, I have some of the models here I can show you. Here's the Nordic Reindeer. So these are, uh, this is Dashing Through the Snow. I'll just show you quickly. <clears throat> and here's Joy Noel. And I have a finisher that does these for me. She just adds the most beautiful trims. I love, 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 love how they're finished. So let's go back to this one, the Joy Noel. I'm not, I'm sorry, I misspoke, the, or the fields. So let's get the book out. Let's see, I have all my books here. So this is what the book looks like. And inside it shows the various um, models in different colors. Uh, yes, okay, you can see the blue model here. So let's talk about the first model and what did I stitch it on? So this particular one is stitched on a 36 count Edinburgh linen in winter moon. I stitched it over two threads with one ply of floss and the, I can, I can hear my husband downstairs on the phone. This has happened before, I forget to close the door to my office. Um, again, I used ribbon red for this one and you could use DMC floss. It was mounted um, so this one, I just walked around Hobby Lobby and I was trying to find something that I thought would look about the size of this piece. I had stitched it already. I knew what I wanted to do for a finish. And thankfully, I came across this, it's just kind of a little frame. And I, it actually had a sign on it and it was, the sides were white, but the top of it was black. So I spray painted it white. It's been mounted several times here. So I mounted it on one board using red fabric. I mounted the design on a separate board 
and then I put a little um, piece of rickrack between these two layers. I love how the finish looks. I love it on this because it could be set on a shelf. It doesn't have to be hung on a wall. I just think it would make just such a neat decoration. So that is one version of where the fields we go. And let me grab two more and tell you about these. So let's, let's check this one out. So the one that is done in blue, to me, I think, the, I love blue, you can tell. <laughs> um, I love it because to me it looks wintry. It doesn't necessarily, it could stay out, I think, through the winter. Uh, this was stitched on a 28 count linen, antique white. And the blue that I used, let me double check here. Hmm, it's on the back. No, here it is. Okay, the blue that I used was Blue Beatrice by Classic Color Works. And I had my um, professional finisher finish this. I was running out of time, and I love what she did. I love the fabric. I had sent her the fabric on the back, and I kind of had an idea of what I wanted it to look like. Fairly simple, just a rickrack trim. I think it looks very sweet in the blue. And then the third model, and I have to uh, give a thanks to Karen, who model stitched this for me in record time. I have to say thank you to her. She did a beautiful job. This is stitched on a 28 count red Christmas linen from Witchell, and it was just stitched in uh, B5200 white DMC. And again, it was just finished with a variety of trims, ribbons that are easy to find, a rickrack, a little button, and, you know, you can always look at the cover of the booklets to get ideas for how to do the finishing yourself. So that is design number three. All right, this one was really fun to design, the next one. Oh, I like them all, you know. So I'm going to turn... Uh, you know what? I am tempted to get up and close the door. I know you're going to think I'm goofy, but that's okay. You know I'm goofy. And I don't do any editing, so. Someone told me last time I did this, they said, oh, we can't hear them at all. But I can hear them, so I'm just turning this for a second here. So I wanted to show you, let me lay some things down, that I had such fun with this one because Owls in the Round, I did a tiered tray. And there are so many fun things that you can find to add to your tiered tray. I bought this little Hello Fall sign a year ago. I looked yesterday, they still have it. The pumpkins are still available from Hobby Lobby. There's another little pumpkin, you probably can't see it. It's move some things. It's in the back here. That's a little plaid pumpkin. So let's go back to this design. I'm going to show you the over two first. And this I actually didn't show in the last video, but I thought you might be interested in how I finished it. So here is the owls designed, um, worked over two with two ply of floss. And it was worked, I'm going to have to get the booklet out because I can't remember what I did. It was worked on a 32 count Belfast, here's the booklet, in the color Fairy Dust, which is actually a very pale yellow. And I mounted this, I'm going to take off, this is actually the lid, as you could see, of a glass jar. Now this glass jar is giant, and I'm sure you could find something smaller. But what I pictured is putting Halloween candy in it. I thought it would make such a nice display. And on the inside of the lid, I always take an, an owl and work an extra one just as a little surprise on the inside of the lid. So these were finished as a flat piece. And I'll tell you a little bit about, and I'll show you on the model again. So this is what the jar looks like. It was finished just with twisted cording on this one. And then I'll talk to you about the other one. And I remember a couple weeks ago, I found a little glass jar at Target that had a lid just like this that fit nicely on the top. 
and that would work for this design too and it's a little you don't have to put quite so much candy in it so how did this come about well my friend Anne at dying to stitch mentioned the owls and when I started this design I when I do a lot of these that are oh like the rabbits or the cats or the dogs I try to go back and find uh, go through antique samplers to find charts that look like they're old now there aren't that many owls that were used in antique samplers I did find it's probably easier to see on the over two. Let me grab this one. So it was putting them together. That was always challenging. And let's see if I can show you. Let me look in my folder here. I had some, I'm laughing because I'm looking at, at, at um, version number two. And you can see that I had one owl here that was very kind of peculiar and he was kind of bothering me and so he was deleted and, and he wasn't included in the final version but it's fun it's a fun thing to put together as i say said before it's like putting a puzzle together this one as all the others do always has little elements that are tying in the background which i call leaves and berries and then i also stitched it over one and let's check that out. That was on a 28 count linen. And I'll check the color in just a minute. I think it's persimmon. I'm pretty sure it is. And this I finished with a pom pom trim again from Lady Dot Creates. And that's called Jack, like Jack o' Lantern. And this little wooden board is a cutting board that I actually got at Hobby Lobby. It was unpainted. I just, uh, and this lid actually was unpainted. So I just, um, got some Delta paints and quickly painted a base coat on that, mounted it as a round, added the trim, and then the little bow at the top. And I love how that one turned out also. So let's look at the book here. So the booklet, as I mentioned, looks like this. And I use persimmon, which is Weeks Dye Works. This is 58 inches across, 58, 58 round actually. And that's the finishing on the owl design. So, all right, we have two more to go. I think I'm setting a record for a long video today. That's okay, I had a lot to tell you. So, the next design I want to talk to you about was one that I did. And let's see, talk about my notes on this one. So, last spring, I don't think I pulled it. I did a book called Petite Cottages, and they were mounted on these little wooden tags that I, I order from a company in France called the Bee Company, and they were so much fun to design. They were very, very popular, and both Delphine and I, who own the company, came up kind of at the same idea. I was trying to use one of her products for this market, and we both came up with the idea of let's do, what about a Christmas cottage? So. Again, I loved putting them together. Again, I started with a list. Um, obviously, I'm a list maker, so I think about all the elements that I could add to these designs. So the one with the red roof has uh, like a bow running through here, a Christmas tree, a tiny wreath on the door, and then some beads that are used. Oh, and it has a little lamp on this side. And each time I do one of these, I try to vary the shape of the roof, the shape of the windows, and the elements that are used in this piece. So that's one of the petite Christmas cottages. Here's another one. This one has a green roof. This was actually the first one I did. It has uh, little boughs running across the top of the house. And you probably can't see, but at the top of each bough is a red bead. And then there's another bow right below that set of windows. Uh, there's another Christmas tree on the side here. As I say, I just try to vary them. The color of the roofs, the chimney, the shape, the windows, etc. And then the third design, let's see here, let me put this back together, has uh, a checkerboard roof. It has a little candle in the upstairs window. It has a tree in the window of this house, 
and they all have snow at the bottom. This has kind of a polka dotted background. So finishing these is quite easy and I want to, I'll show you the book and then I will walk you through the finishing steps. So this is what the book looks like for Petite Christmas Cottages. And I stitched this on, all, all the cottages are stitched on a 32 count antique white Belfast linen over two with two ply. And they're fairly small. They're only about a oh, little less than two inches wide and about two and a half inches high. And that is so that they can fit on these tags. So how do I know how to cut these shapes? Well, I go back to the little hint that I gave you in an earlier video. And that is after I stitched each design, let's hold up this one. I took it over to my printer. I made a black and white copy of that design. And then once I have the black and white copy, this serves as the template for how to cut the cardboard, the comic board that goes behind the design. And then I can mount the stitched piece on that board and I use a little felt or batting. And then this too is trimmed with a uh, little twisted cording. So I did that with each one. I made a copy of the, the stitch design. That served as the template because each of them are just a little bit differently shaped at the top. And incidentally, they just fit on this board. Uh, they were designed like that. And then I did, of course, the same thing, made a copy with the third one. Now the fibers that I used in these designs were all DMC fibers and they're, this is actually what I call a triple fold book. So on the inside you'll have three charts and then next to each chart you'll see a picture of the house that you're stitching. Now I have some other ideas for you for finishing these if um, you're not able to get the tags. And I carry the tags and the shops can order them for you. They're a little costly, I would say, because they come from France, and of course I have to pay shipping on them, but I just think they make the most beautiful ornaments. So that might be a way that you choose to finish it. You could finish it as a flat and not mount it on a board, and then I have two other ideas that I found for you. All right, so what is the last design of the re new releases? This one is called Christmas Tree Collection. Oh, I have a funny story about this one. Oh, <laughs> do you ever have times in your life where you feel like maybe there kind of is a little black cloud over your head and things are not going smoothly? It happens to us all. So this is kind of off the topic, but I have been struggling with my desktop computer for almost two weeks. It keeps shutting down. I've uh, the nearest Apple store is an hour away. I've taken it up there three times in the last 10 days. And everything that I do for my work is done on this desktop computer that I'm sitting at right now. All my invoicing, all my designing, etc. So not having it is really difficult. So that was my first little black cloud. And I ended up bringing home a new computer a week ago that I'm using while supposedly they're fixing the old one. We shall see. So my little black cloud had to do with yesterday I picked up the new books and I opened the box. I was in a hurry. I brought them home. I didn't look at them in the store. And incidentally, before I publish a book, there are three people who go through the proofing. I myself proof it. My assistant Dawn proofs it. And of course the graphic designer is proofing it also and we work together and we make many changes so i'm almost embarrassed to tell you this but i'm going to uh, share my secret today so i got home yesterday i opened the box and i looked at it and i thought i looked at the title so there are two things wrong here the first thing i noticed is that the number was wrong because i have done this is the 11th book in this series, and the number says six. And I thought, oh my gosh, 
How did we miss that? It's so obvious. It's on the cover. How in the heck did we do this? And then I studied it a little bit closer and the word collection is spelled wrong. So I could not in good conscience sell a booklet like that that wasn't right. So I called the printer, I, ca I called Don, and I called the graphic artist and um, she quickly, she apologized, she redid the art and we have printed the whole book. So out the door go the old ones and here is the correct booklet. So this is a series that I've done for quite a while. And as you can see, it's number 11. Each booklet has two trees in it. And these are the trees that I designed this time. And let me tell you a little bit about the fabric I used. So the first models that I'm going to show you are worked on a 32 count antique white Belfast. Although this one, uh, no, one of them, this one is uh, on Winter Moon, which has, you can see, has a different little uh, cast to it. The cornucopia tree is done on a fabric, a Zweigert fabric called Winter Moon, and this one is done on the antique white. And these are done over two with two ply of floss. So these are the two trees that are in this newest collection. And then of course I have to do them again over one because I love my little tiny ones. And these are just finished as flask with twisted cording around the edges. And I think they just turned out so sweetly. Again, with this booklet, I used DMC fibers. So I hope you enjoy my review of all the new designs. And I want to show you, as I said, I've got a pile here of other products that I want to talk to you about. So I have used, let me grab something here. Let me grab a couple of things actually. I'll leave that there. So I'm showing you these because these designs could be used on some of the products that I found yesterday. So there's another kind of a wooden tag that I order from the bee company. And this I'm going to show you. <clears throat> this was worked over two. This was worked over one. And these are, whoops, <laughs> there we go. There's the over two and the over one. And this was in French Christmas Tags 1 booklet. This is a little different uh, shape than the house tags. It's just a plain pointed tag. I still carry these. They're laser cut. So I'm showing you these wooden tags as a thought if you're doing ornaments. And that booklet looked like this, the French Christmas tags. And then I did a second booklet that I called French Christmas Tags 2. And I had a little dove in that booklet and a little cardinal. And again, I did those over two. And then I actually did, for the over ones on these, I did uh, tiny little scissor fobs. So I'm showing those to you because I have another chapter here to talk to you about. And that is, these are the products that I found when I was shopping yesterday. And I'm going to put the numbers in my notes below. So this first one is a little wooden sled. Now, I showed you all those sled ornaments. I don't think that my over two designs would fit on this sled but I do think that the over ones would fit. And again, you could paint them. So isn't that sweet? It's reasonable. Uh, I didn't see any larger ones, but we'll have to keep our eyes open in case that is something that they come out with. There are probably other sources for that. All right, here's another thing that I found there. A little wooden door. Now this I pictured that would work with the petite Christmas cottages. Now you'd have to do a little uh, a little work taking this apart because you're going, incidentally these come in red and white and black and I think with a little work you could kind of uh, pinch this glued wreath off of this and then the design would fit on a lower part of the door but I thought that was very sweet and they're fairly reasonable. 
and I will give you, as I say, the product number. So that was uh, product number two. This is product number three that I found. Actually, they've had this for a couple years. It's a wooden, actually it comes in a package of two, a wreath. If I was going to use this, I would paint, I would spray paint the whole thing green. And then I could picture my um, Christmas in the round being mounted in the center of that wooden wreath. So that was my third idea for you. I have two more. These, as I say, I did not purchase because I'm waiting for them to go on, on sale. All right, this one is a clipboard, and I thought it had such possibilities. So I just took a photo of it in the store, and I would say it's probably about maybe eight inches high. I think that my Melinda sampler would look nice on there, and I may have other pieces that would work for that also. I'd probably take off the raffia tie at the top and add bows or greenery, depending on the design that you wanted to mount that in. And then my last idea for you has to do, again, with one of my new designs. All right. So this is a wooden tray. It's painted white. It is not that big. I would say... I should have measured it. I would say about 15 inches long, but ladies, what do you think? You could mount this design in the center of this tray, and again, it could sit on a shelf. So it's a decoration. It's not a useful tray to carry things in unless you figured out how to mount it under glass. But I hope you like my uh, extra shopping that I did for you and that you get some ideas for finishing. So I'm not going to do prizes today. I'm going to wait till my next video. Uh, this week got a little crazy. I have um, a quotation of the day that I like to end my videos with, and I want to tell you a couple things. Please, if you're going to contact me, Judy at jbwdesigns.com is the easiest way for me to be reached. I have an Instagram account, uh, judy.whitman. There is a JBW Ornament stitch along going around right now that's hashtag JBW Ornament Sal. And I hope you, if you have any ornaments, you'll participate in that. Um, and also, I have a contest right now on my Friends of JBW Designs Facebook page. And in this, I always have a contest about every two or three weeks. And I post older designs. And in this case, I chose three different tree designs from past books. Uh, I think, this, let's see, this is from book number two, Tree Collection 2, this is Tree Collection 5, and this is Tree Collection 8. And I ask people to choose their favorite, and then I go through and I count up all the votes to see what which one everybody loves the most, and then I give those three books to one of the people who votes. So it's kind of fun. It's getting a little out of hand. <laughs> I might have to figure out how to reduce this because now I'm having... So many people are voting, it's taking me a long time to tally the votes, but that's okay. It's a great way to um, tell you about my designs, and it's fun to hear all the comments and read them. So, um, what can I say? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for watching and sticking with me for so long. Um, here is my quote for, for the day, and this actually my daughter-in-law posted this the other day. To be happy, you must let go of what's gone. Be grateful for what remains and look forward to what is coming. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye.